Have you ever wondered what goes into a piece of responsible packaging? When it carries the PEFC label, it can contain a lot more than your products. Responsible packaging is renewable. That means if even one tree was cut down to create that packaging, it was done so from a sustainably managed forest or other controlled source. This protects forest species and ecosystems, incentivizes foresters to operate legally and sustainably, and supports forest regeneration, which reduces soil erosion and helps to combat climate change. Responsible packaging is sourced responsibly, with safe working conditions and fair labor practices, not just for foresters, but at every step along the way before it gets to you. It also means traceability. PEFC requires traders and manufacturers to go through third-party audits, demonstrating that certified materials really did originate from a sustainable source. Responsible packaging can be recycled. Recycling is an important part of any sustainability strategy. And the PEFC recycled label helps meet market demands while reducing pressure on forests. So what can you do to join brands like Circle K, Heinz and Dunkin' Donuts and make your packaging more responsible. Start by reaching out to PEFC. We can connect you to suppliers of certified packaging. Add flexibility to your certified supply chain by including PEFC in your procurement plan. Use our label on your certified boxes and bags, making sure your packaging contains a whole lot more. Welcome. Welcome to the PFC webinar. Um, it's great. We still have people coming in. Um, and we're going to start uh, now. So I hope you have enjoyed this short video. Um, welcome to the PFC webinar about enhancing brand values and forest sustainability. Thank you for taking the time to join us for what will be an insightful and informative uh, one hour webinar. A couple of instructions before we start. For um, our attendees that are francophone, you have the possibility to go on to uh, the French channel um, and have simultaneous translation from English to French. And for that, you will see at the bottom of your screen an icon uh, where you can choose translation. So you can go into this translator channel and select the French channel. Second point, uh, you are invited to drop in the Q&A. Again, that you can see at the bottom of your screen, there's a Q&A function, a Q&A app. I invite you to drop your questions as we go along, and then we will pick them up um, in the last quarter uh, of an hour um, to answer your questions. And if we can't answer all of them, we will answer them um, afterwards. If you want, if you have a questions that you want to directly uh, direct to one of the speakers, then please name them in front of your question. Okay, so I'm really delighted to, to have a special guest today. Um, in terms of uh, three speakers who have uh, international um, scope of work. Um, and we, I would like to welcome Michel Fontaine, President or Chairman of the French Packaging Council. I also would like to welcome Anna Cole, Director, uh, Executive Director, Strategy EMA at Lander and Fitch. And also welcome to Agnieszka Imzorovic, Head of Marketing and Supply Chain Quality Assurance at KFC Austria and Slovakia. I am Fabian Sinclair. I will be your host for today. I will moderate this session. I'm Head of Market Engagement at PFC International. So before I hand over to our uh, panelists, I would like to highlight a few things about PFC, uh, where we are at, and of course a little bit about EUDR as well, as it's such a such a hot topic. But before, I have a bit of a ritual. 
Um, my ritual is to start with um, my ritual is to start with the forest. It's where we it all starts. Um, the forest play a vital role um, to protect um, us now and also future generations. We depend on forest for our survival, for the air we breathe, for the water we drink, for the dry biodiversity that it hosts, the social support uh, it gives to whether it's a community living within a forest and also the workers um, around a forest. And of course, not forgetting the biggest natural carbon management machine that uh, for uh, the forest is um, through the three S's. By the three S's, what I mean is the sequestration of carbon, the storage of carbon, and the substitution of carbon. And this is what forests do for us. And actually today we touch a little bit on substitution, even though we're not really going into this, this dimension, but this is substitution of some um, packaging that are, have higher uh, CO2 footprint versus forest-based packaging. So moving on to um, PEFC, a few words. Um, PFC is um, an, an NGO that is global NGO, and we work uh, towards the, the forest values for the planet and humans. The program for the endorsement of forest certification, we are an NGO and we have been um, driving forest stewardships for the last 24 years, nearly, nearly 20, 25 years. We strive to balance social, environmental, and economic dimensions of sustainability. Those three pillars are critical uh, to stop deforestation and enhance and regenerate forest. We also strive to inspire and help people, companies, and communities to reach their sustainability goals. Um, that is through is responsible sourcing, but also all the work that um, is happening through our requirements of our sustainable forest management standard and also the chain of custody standard that I'll come back to. And a lot of these requirements are also playing into uh, some of the ESG requirements. Where are we today? Um, PFC is the largest uh, forest certification system in terms of hectares um, today. We represent 291 million hectares that are PFC certified, and that represents 71% of total um, certified forests at global level. This amount of certified forest is coming through 48 endorsed national systems uh, that will implement the PFC international standard and um, with the addition of their national specificities. The traceability um, past the forest gate is achieved through 22,000 chain of custody certified companies in 70 countries. So the good work that is happening in forest can then be transferred through your supply chain um, so that as a retailer or brand owner, you can make the end claim of using X amount of PFC certified material. And simply put, uh, otherwise we probably need two days to go through a sustain a sustainable forest management standard and a chain of custody standard. But simply put, what does it mean? Um, it, it's really about the work that is done in the forest in as far as providing now and for future generation healthy forest ecosystems. This means no deforestation, protection and enhancement of biodiversity and carbon storage. Healthy workers in terms of their, of, of their rights, in terms of their training, in terms of their wages and so on and so forth. Healthy communities in terms of the respect through FPIC of indigenous people's rights. 
and of course, and also healthy local economy in terms of increasing livelihood, providing jobs and incomes. If a forest does not have a value, it will be converted to another commodity. And this work is then transferred to uh, the supply chain and through each of the steps of manufacturing or processing um, to ensure the traceability, the traceability of either that the material originate from a sustainably managed forest, um, but also ensuring that it meets all the legal requirements of a given country and of inter-regional uh, legal requirements, legislations. Um, it also invites for um, independent audit uh, of the manufacturing that is happening, of the traceability of the, of the certified material, whether from an SFM or whether through control sources um, with a real detailed um, due diligence system, also called DDS, and also through covering some key elements on and key requirements on health, uh, safety, and labor issues. So this is really simply put the two core elements of forest certification. And all of this being in place, then as, a, as an end user, meaning as a, as a brand owner or as a retailer, you can uh, use the PFC logo on your products or on your website or on your um, annual sustainability reports. Strictly speaking, it means you have for the on-product use the choice between two labels, the PFC certified label um, and the PFC recycled label. For the off-product use, your website, your sustainability report, your in-store materials, um, you can use what we call the off-product label. And actually here, this is just the core one, but we also offer a variation of messages um, for you to choose from. Now, a little bit about EUDR. Um, as, as I mentioned earlier on, this is really a good opportunity to actually um, talk about EUDR. And um, I just, here we go. So overall, um, PFC wants to align if with the PFC requirement of EUDR uh, to ensure that as brand and retailers, you provide, we provide you with the evidence of compliance to the legislation. So already, uh, PFC International uh, standards address quite a few of the core elements, meaning the um, anti-deforestation uh, regulation and requirements, in fact, that are already in our standards and have been in our standards since 2099, uh, 19, 1999, so since uh, for 24 years already. Um, there's also the requirements of protecting climate, as well as protecting sustainable livelihoods, and already an alignment with the current EUTR um, in terms of timber regulation. So what does it mean, um, first of all, for the roadmap that we have in place uh, to enable this alignment by January 2025? So as far as the roadmap, uh, we are currently already a member of the EU Commission um, expert platform. We have completed our gap assessment. Um, we have now uh, developed and are recruiting for the deliberation of um, through the PFC experts group, whether it's a sustainable forest management group or a chain of custody group. Um, to really convene stakeholders uh, rapidly, to rapidly make decisions on how we adapt our um, standards to align to the UDR. Um, we are also uh, developing solutions according to our standard setting procedures. We have very strict procedures. Um, typically, it takes us up to two years to do a standard revision. We know we don't have that time, 
and therefore we have a fast track approach um, that has been approved by our um, members. We also have consideration to deliver practical and cost efficient solution to support certificate holders. Uh, of course, we are mindful of the EUDR uh, expectations, even though all the practicalities from the Commission, uh, as you understand, are not clear yet. We are also moving in parallel um, and, and, and also making some assumptions of how it should work and how it could work. Um, and we are also raising awareness through an engagement uh, plan. Soon we're going to launch our landing page on our website with an FAQ and several ways of keeping you informed of how PFC is uh, advancing. Clearly, there are three core uh, areas under specific deliberation. The first one is about deforestation-free um, extended definitions. So this required some of our definitions to be adapted. Uh, the second one is about um, DDS, uh, DDS med methodology. Those two should be, should be fairly um, easy to adapt. And clearly the third one, geolocation and data transfer is the complex one. Um, and, and we will need a lot of uh, collaboration um, to make it happen. But again, we are committed to achieving alignment with the ODR through standard adjustment. So that was that. And now I would like to go back to our topic of today in terms of responsible um, sourcing. And we have we, we put it very simply for what it means to, to the packaging um, in terms of the three R, meaning the uh, renewable aspect of a forest. So you are sourcing a material that will um, that comes from a re renewable source. That's through our SFM standard. You are responsibly sourcing that raw material through a plan of custody standard. And also often that it is forget forgotten or not known that PFC holds a PFC recycle label. So now I would like to invite uh, Michel. Uh, Michel Fontaine. Um, Michel is chair of the French Packaging Council, CNE. Michel has a rich um, 38 years legacy um, of head of as head of packaging and product development, um, and used to work for a very uh, global organization. Michel, over to you. Okay. Thank you, Fabien. Thank you very much. I uh, try to catch my uh, screen. Oops. Perfect. Good. Good. Uh, I will start by this one. Who are we? In fact, uh, CNE is a, is an NGO as a PEFC. It's a French NGO non-profit organization and um, the purpose of this organization is to go over all the value chain of the packaging and uh, with a claim uh, which is to to find the good packaging the just packaging in french by the way i'm sorry for my uh, typical french accent i hope it will work it will work for everyone um back now to the previous slide okay um you you may find uh, all the information on the website uh, you have the address of the website um it is in french obviously but also in english so on the site, you have all the documentation, which, which is free. Uh, our purpose, you will see uh, after, our purpose is not to, to ask people to pay for uh, doing a good packaging. We want to, to give freely everything we are doing and we are thinking about. Um, you have also on the 
on the on the right, uh, you, you can see that we are doing a, a contest every year, which is called Emballé 5.0. It's a free uh, contest uh, for students uh, for the, the one uh, studying packaging in the French and French speaking schools over Europe. So now back to the presentation, our missions very simple missions you have them all but the more important in on, on the left we uh, uh, the first mission is really to create and publish best practices in uh, in the conception in the use in the sale in all the the chain the value chain we we want to to address and to then to create and publish all topics you will see after uh, the last documentation we did. We are also proactive to build a, a responsible policy, and uh, uh, it's uh, probably why PEFC France is an active member of CNE, and we are very proud to have a PEFC as a member. And um, I will go, you can see the documents we we did in the last uh, uh, years uh, the last one is emptiness you know we uh, you, you you have seen in the papers a lot of uh, uh, questions about the fact that we when you are uh, packing a product and when we are uh, taking this product from the production to the end user we we have a lot of emptiness in the packaging and in the on the pallets and uh, we we did uh, some documentation on that uh, we did also the uh, the most important for us is uh, to have facts and figures on the environmental aspect of packaging so you you you, you will be able to to see that on our site i will not go through all documents i will now uh, try to answer uh, some questions and to uh, to respond to the demand of PFC. First of all, uh, you know that uh, we are uh, in a kind of war with CO2, and uh, the idea is to uh, to have less uh, CO2 in the air in the following years. So. The first question is, do you know the average impact of packaging on the, the CO2 footprint of a consumer group? It's uh, obviously, uh, you, you may have a lot of differences uh, between all the goods, but in average, it has been calculated in Great Britain, in France, and uh, in some other countries. The answer is 8%. And what is the reason I am putting this figure in front of you is the fact that you have to keep in mind that uh, the packaging itself is, is providing a very little part of the CO2 footprint in the consum consumption of goods. 8% uh, for the packaging means that 92% is the product itself. So it's uh, the this, reason, this figure uh, invited, invites you to be very uh, uh, careful about the way you are uh, claiming what you do on the packaging. Because uh, at the end, if you save, I would say, 20% on the packaging footprint, 20% uh, of 8%, it's uh, just the thickness of the line. Okay? So be careful to to keep that in mind. Uh, the second message I want to, to push is the fact that uh, uh, sustainability is a, is a concept. I think the first time this concept was raised was in 87. And uh, the, the CNE uh, started in 97 at the time where, where the concept was uh, really working well and everyone was knowing uh, uh, what we were talking about. Um, 
sustainability is not for the CNE uh, something which must be a competitive advantage. And probably I will not be completely aligned with uh, the two ladies uh, following me in a, in a moment. But uh, uh, for me, uh, the packaging sustainability, it's a must. It's not uh, something you can uh, give to the consumer if you wish. It's a must you must have because your, your brand reputation is uh, at risk if you don't do that. It's really uh, like w when you are building an, a house, you need to have a, a, a strong foundation to build the house. And uh, sustainability is part of the foundation for any product. Next, if the system allows me to go next. Yeah. Um, among the documentation we, we did in CNE, you, you will be able to see that we have been working a lot on what we call environmental claims. And um, because it's really, really important, consumer is part of the value chain and the uh, consumer must be respected. By the way, in France, it is by law. We must be careful on what we say on the product by law. And uh, uh, for us, it's very important to pay attention. Again, if I can do something in my chart. Sorry. Can you click uh, to... Yes, again, again, again. So you, you have all uh, uh, the, the, the attributes. We, we want to be clear when you do an environmental claim to be sincere, objective, complete, and proven by documentation. OK, so next. I'm sorry not to have them. Okay. So what we feel at the CNE level is the fact that um, when you use uh, uh, raw material, and typically today the paper or the cardboard, um, it is not really relevant to compare uh, and to say, oh, my material is not uh, uh, like plastic coming from uh, fossil uh, oil. Um, or it's, it is consuming less energy than the glass or whatever. We, we think that uh, when a, a company is using a packaging, it's for various reasons. And uh, these reasons are mainly related with, with the, the product which is inside. So it's not easy, you know, to, to, uh, to say that this one can be, can be uh, a substitution for this one uh, because you have to take care of the product inside the packaging. So we don't feel comfortable with this kind of comparison. And by the way, uh, when a company has, uh, I would say, 60% uh, of his uh, portfolio of product having, for example, plastic, and uh, if uh, for 5% of them they say, I will replace that because plastic is really bullshit, you don't, we don't want to use plastic anymore. Uh, what, what could be the, the consumer reaction uh, seeing that uh, the 55 rest of their product is still having plastic because they need plastic? You know, so the, the fact to, to say that uh, take my product because it is not like others, we much prefer the next slide, please. We very much prefer the fact to highlight the qualities of your raw material because paper and cardboard, all this, this family has fantastic qualities which must be highlighted uh, in uh, your communication. Uh, it is recyclable, it uses recycled material, renewable, you have seen what uh, Fabian said. It is certified. And that's the key element, because uh, when you are certified, you can be uh, stronger with the consumer and uh, with a reasonable uh, low CO2 impact. So 
more or less that was the message I wanted to pass to you. And obviously, I will be completely available for any question. Thank you very much, Michel. So, Ki, Ki uh, I had forgotten actually <laughs> that, yes, the sustainability concept uh, started or was sketched out in 1987. It's a long time ago, and yet we are we are not there yet. So I would tend to agree with you vis-a-vis -vis sustainability it must be business as usual. Um, that's great. Now I would like to invite um, Anna Cole to speak. Um, and Anna is an executive director, as I mentioned earlier on, executive director strategy, EMA Alanda and Fitch, as part of the WPP group a strategies dedicated to transformative brand design, bridging landlords brand consulting with Fitch Retail Consulting and Consultancy. Anna, explain to us a little more of your finding and insights, please. Absolutely. Um, so I will be talking to Michelle's point. I don't disagree actually with Michelle. I do think that it should be um, a must for reputation, um, but I will talk a bit more about how you can actually switch it from just being a cost or a change that's hard for you into something that can actually drive difference um, for a brand. And when you start to drive difference, you actually start to um, grow, right? And to have a stronger brand and therefore have short-term and long-term growth. So I'll talk a bit more about that. And the, my screen doesn't seem to move. Oh yes, now it is, okay. I call this sustainable packaging unpacked because there's many, many things that we could talk about. Um, but really what I'll focus on today is how we can make your pack not only good for the planet and people, but also for your business. So, oh, now it's going too fast, sorry. Um, so we live in the decade of decision and action on sustainability, right? We all know this. Um, and what's interesting though, is that packaging actually, when you look at the UN sustainability, sustainable development goals, touches a lot of them when we, when we think about that. And the other thing that's certainly true is that plastic and over packaging as we, you know, as it became very current in the 80s, because plastic wasn't that much of a big packaging material before the 80s, um, actually has a short shelf life when it comes to consumers, because um, consumers and reg regulators both ask for it, and but also a lot of new brands have shown consumers that a different path is possible. So um, there's no excuse. It almost all started with this, right? It was this National Geographic cover where we all understood that many, many things that we use in our daily lives have a very short usage, but a very long time um, and very long impact on our environment and on the health of our planet. Um, and that has really led um, when it comes to, to packaging, um, but also to plastic waste in general, um, to a real shift in consumers' awareness and mindsets. When you now look at the latest um, Who Cares Who Does numbers from Kanta, um, which always every year really go and understand what consumers think and want when it comes to sustainability, um, you can see that, that plastic-free packaging is ranking very high in the list of um, what consumers now expect from brands um, to, to live up to, to actually be recognized or being seen as having a responsible reputation, right? So um, a lot of consumers, more than more than seven, almost more than 65% really um, feel that it's very important. So it's um it's it's really important. And 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 by the way, that's not something that's Europe centric. That's something that's worldwide. And we see that even in countries like in Asia, um, where they start to see really plastic pollution in their daily lives much more in the sea or on the side of the road, the numbers are even higher. So this is not a, a Europe phenomena. This is really a worldwide um, phenomena. Um, and when we then see what consumers would like companies to do, right, um, they, they are actually asking for such quite simple solutions, right? And um, so recycled, um, packaging, packaging that's biodegradable, well, that's paper is, is, is already in there, um, packaged in other material than plastic. Again, paper plays a, a, and carton plays a good role there, um, but then also lighter weight packaging. So many, many things that actually carton and paper can start to answer. 
But, and there is a but in there, um, there is a risk for brands to just jump onto those trains of pulp packages, etc., etc., um, because if they don't do it right, they're actually going to use lose differentiation and brand strengths. I, I took this, I'm not even sure it's real, right? I took this off the internet. It's just an illustrative image to say, if everybody starts to use the same pulp bottle as of tomorrow, then brand, the brand strengths and the differentiation of the brand will be greatly diminished. That said, there is ways to do this much better. And me, it's not about saying you shouldn't do that because it, you won't differentiate. It's more about saying you should do this in a very differentiated way. Because while it's great that we all share those efforts, right? That we're all coming finally together to, to try to save um, what's, rest of, what's left of our planet. There is also a lot that's done by companies that leads to a, what we call a green sea of sameness, right? Everybody's making the same claims. Everybody's doing it in the same way. And therefore, you diminish actually the value for consumer because they're like, yeah, it's table stakes, right? So what you need to do now is actually do those things, but do them in your own way, do them in a differentiated way so that you're getting return on investment, that you're getting recognition, and that you're building brand strengths. And when you do that, then you can actually have what the UN was envisioning. Um, you can actually do good for the planet, for the people, but also for your profit. And profit, if you don't do that, is the forgotten P. And your move to good actually becomes an investment and not something that can drive ROI. So let's look at what are opportunities to actually make packs truly good for planet people and your business. The way you will go after the third forgotten P is by adding difference to relevance. Relevance is clearly established, right? Those are the numbers I've showed you in the beginning. Those, it's clear that paper and carton packaging is relevant to people. It answers some of their biggest environmental concerns. I'm not saying it's the biggest environmental concerns for the planet. I hear Michelle when he says it's 8%, but I'm talking about consumer perception, right? Um, but, the way you need to do it is different. Only by doing that, you're gonna grow your brand stronger. And when your brand is stronger, has increased relevance and difference, you're gonna grow, not just in the short term, but also in the long term. So a couple of examples that I thought were interesting. So um, a non-plastic pack can actually be a differentiator in certain categories. So look at boxed water, right? They have built a whole brand on a different packaging material in a, in a category that was all about PET PET bottles, right? It can also really start to create forms and things that become iconic assets for your brand. Look at Toblerone, right? We're in Switzerland here. So Toblerone is one of our icons. Now Toblerone is not produced in Switzerland wholeheartedly anymore. So they can't use the Matterhorn anymore. They can't use the, the iconic um, mountain that they had on the pack anymore as one of their brand assets. Well, they just replaced it by their pack packaging shape that everybody knows is that amazing triangular carton box, right? So it can really help you to establish difference, to establish something that's unique to you. It can also help you break the shape, sh shelf and create appetite appeal differently. Look at Heinz, right? Heinz, we all know the bottle, right? We all associate that color of the ketchup to the brand and the color of the ketchup and all of that gives us, we know exactly how that's gonna taste. Well, they're not shying away from the challenge. They're actually taking that challenge on and creating something very disruptive for those who work in packaging and know how important stop is on a supermarket shelf. We know that that's gonna break a shelf, right? That that's gonna be very, very disruptive. Also very much Heinz, right? Very brand led. It says, we are ketchup. Ketchup is made of tomatoes, right? They're playing their big brand story in a very unique way um, that will certainly drive um, good things for them. You can also use this switch and change to actually create different relationships with your consumers. 
And you can even do that by including that consumer on the journey. It's not always just about claims, right? And how much better that packaging is. For example, I love this um, um, this sportwear brand. It's called Prana. And they actually moved from big cartons to, to thin paper envelopes when they're, when they're, um, when they're sending their, their clothes to consumers. And they're saying, look, this is a test. If this comes to you ripped, then please tell us and we, you know, we will clean your clothes or we will make it good. But we're also learning so that we can really do better for you. Or look at what um, Nike Air did with actually using AR to show their journey, to share their journey with their consumer in a gamified way so that the consumer could actually start to become part of that journey. So there's not just the carton box, there's also the whole story of the carton box, everything that that carton box actually changes in the world and the consumer can, can be part of it. So again, a very differentiated, differentiating way of doing it instead of just putting a claim. This is one on the left is one of my preferred things I saw in Cannes last year. Um, it's called the Killer Pack. Um, it, it sounds pretty brutal, but it's actually um, a really differentiating approach to mosquito, um, uh, combating mosquitoes. So um, this is for countries where mosquitoes are a real plague, but also a real health Hazard, right? Hazard, because um, they um, they actually give illnesses to people um, by stinging them. Um, what this this brand they sell mos um, mosquito incense um, kind of rolls like this. What they found out is that combat like fighting against mos mosquitoes in your house is one thing, but the real mosquito plague ac actually comes from the dumpsters, from the trash cans. That's where the larvae lives. That's where the mosquitoes were bred. So this carton pack is actually enri enriched with um, insecticides so that they kill the larvae in the trash bin and therefore, therefore combat um, mosquitoes on two levels. They really helped in certain um, countries, um, I think it was India and another country, um, to limit the mosquito plague that they had um, with, with a really smart and differentiated usage of a, of a carton pack. Um, the other one on the right is one of our cases. We work with Dell Technologies, and um, um, every time when there is um, the the big tech event in Las Vegas, see La, see La, Las Vegas, every tech brand on the planet sends out loads of goodies to tech journalists. Um, we didn't want to do that. We actually wanted to drive um, a different point of view on 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 tech ways. So we created this empty carton box, um, send it to to the journalists. Um, and ask them to put to put their to put their electronic waste into it and send it back. So a very disrupted and differentiated way again of using a packaging instead of enclosing something that you give to people, actually using it to get something back. So again, really a point of difference and a great story, story, storyteller. You can also use the switch to a new material to rethink your packaging. Um, from the ground up and to make it accessible to all. We know that one person out of five has disabil di disabilities that make it hard for people to engage with usual usual packaging. So here's an example, for example, from um, PlayStation, um, they use their switch to actually put different handles on it and open it di differently so that people with dexterity challenges could get into, into, the, in, into the pack. PNG Laundry Brands did the same by creating this amazing, what they call the EcoClick box, um, which you can now open with one hand, very simply, still child safe and much better for the environment because made out of carton. So uh, a great opportunity to create difference to to bring something to life that your brand stands for and to rethink um, what you can give as value to consumers how you can improve their experience and if you do that then we have no doubt that not only are you going to do better for planet and people but you're also going to drive profit because you are going to have a more differentiated more reputable but also more loved brand um, that people will engage with with pleasure and over and over and that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna. So, yes, sustainability um, is a must, but not at a cost. And you uh, rightly pointed out the risk of lacking differentiation um, with opportunities for shared value creation. So I think um, plenty of, of room there. And I like how you, the example that you've pulled out 
how you can still emphasize of your brand positioning and brand identity on the packaging or create a different relationship with the consumer. Thank you very much, Anna. And Anna would like to invite um, our third speaker, Agnieszka Imzirovic, um, who is head of marketing and supply chain and quality assurance at Queensway, representing KFC Austria and Slovakia. Agnieszka is an experienced marketing leader uh, with over 15 years experience in FMCG and luxury sectors, successfully managing and grow growing global brands. Over to you, Agnieszka. Thank you very much, uh, Fabienne, for the introduction. And hello, everybody. I'm really excited to be here today. And I'm happy to share a short overview about our um, uh, end consumer collaboration, which we launched in the Austrian market to raise awareness for the PEFC seal, as well as sustainable choices that we are making. But first, let's uh, share a few words about KFC. So I'm trying to move, take control over the screen. Oh yeah, it works. Perfect, excellent. So KFC, yeah, it's finger licking good. And when we look at KFC, sorry, so struggling, yes. Then uh, what we can say is that chicken is definitely our superpower. And we use this superpower to create crave for our end consumers by offering free distinctive recipes, which is hot, wing, hot and spicy, crispy, as well as the original recipe. So, second. Exactly. And the distinctive taste is what makes our products really special and that they create an unforgettable taste sensation for our consumers. We offer these products and I hope that some of you have already tried them in, in a diversity of different um, um, combinations from our famous hot wings bucket two wraps as well as burgers and um and uh, a variety of uh, different um uh, sides so what else is important for our customers aside of uh, incredible taste uh, convenient packaging and uh, and uh, pleasant restaurant experience well when we make market research and we look at our consumer expectations. We see since uh, several years already that there is a strong trend which, which can be described as uh, health as well as sustainability trends. From one side, we, we're talking about uh, um, a big interest in particular of the younger target groups in, for instance, plant-based meat, which is uh, offering a, a new and a modern choice, which is also more sustainable, but also in general, uh, the, the topic of uh, overall conscious uh, choices that we make as a company, but also that customers make by themselves. Uh, are, grow of, are of growing importance. And uh, what we see when we look at successful brands is that brands that are trusted, that they are acting um, respectfully to the environment and uh, have uh, clear rules uh, when, when, uh, when working uh, and committing in terms of uh, their brand values are much more successful than those um, where it's unknown uh, what the values are. So when we look at the importance of sustainability, here it's in particular interesting that we see that uh, in, in, in particular the food segment has a high interest uh, or it has a high relevance in, in the area of uh, sustainability. And um, this is uh, really going across all, all different age groups uh, of people. So this combined uh, the, the interest in food as well as in sustainability uh, was the particular link where we felt that we would like to launch a campaign together with PEFC highlighting our choices. Yeah. So under under the 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 campaign um, campaign uh, vision, sustainability is a choice. We work together with the local team to define an end consumer campaign where we wanted to highlight uh, 
um, the origin of our uh, packagings uh, that we are sourcing and also um, presenting and raising awareness uh, for the PEFC seal and what it guarantees, uh, what it guarantees uh, as a seal uh, on, on our products. Yeah, so together with the team, we made a brainstorming and as a key message, uh, the, the anchor of the communication campaign was that forestry secures jobs, sustainable forest management secures the forest, and therefore we se secure our uh, uh, secure tomorrow's jobs and also tomorrow's forest together. Um, we try to make this communication campaign in, um, in a very emotional, positive and approachable way. And I think we found a really good uh, um, a, a really good link to uh, the beginning of what we heard from Fabienne, to the forest and how it all starts there. Here you see some impressions from working on the campaign. And I will share the video in just a minute. Heute verrate ich, warum ich mich freue, wenn ich auf so einer Verpackung wie von KFC das BFC Siegel sehe. Ich bin der Andreas Steiniger, bin Land- und Forstwirt und ich schaue auf den Wald. Das kannst du auch mit dem BFC Siegel. Das BFC Siegel verrät mir, dass das Holz, das in den Karton drinnen ist, entlang der gesamten Wertschöpfungskette streng kontrolliert worden ist. Und so war sie, dass da mit Sicherheit Holz aus nachhaltiger Forstwirtschaft bringen ist. Erst wird im Wald kontrolliert, ob die BFC-Kriterien für nachhaltige Forstwirtschaft eingehalten werden. Dann wird der Baum an jeder seiner Station bis zum fertigen Bucket kontrolliert. Von der Ernte, vom Fällen, vom Umschneiden, über den bodenschonenden Abtransport bis hin zum Werk. Ein unabhängiger Kontrolleur kommt regelmäßig ins Werk und kontrolliert die Holzeinkäufe. Er stellt sicher, dass alle Bäume aus nachhaltiger Forstwirtschaft stammen. Und das BFC-Siegel auf der Verpackung zeigt die Wertschöpfungskette für alle transparent und sichtbar. Nachhaltige Waldwirtschaft ist nur möglich, weil sich in Österreich so viele Menschen entlang der Wertschöpfungskette mit dem BFC-Siegel für den Wald von morgen einsetzen. Dafür bin ich als Forstwirt und Konsument dankbar. So viel wir steckt in Waldwirtschaft mit dem BFC-Siegel. Thank you very much. Well, I hope you liked uh, the, the video and uh, the communication campaign that was created. Um, I think what it highlights is in a very easy way, um, the transparency of the whole uh, sustainability chain that is there, um, as well as it uh, transports credibility, as well as I think sympathy for the PEFC seal. So it becomes really an approachable concept for the end consumer. And um, what we experienced when we launched the campaign uh, in restaurants, so it was a 360 degree basically communication campaign where the video you just saw was launched via YouTube and promoted across uh, social media channels for over one month, um, targeting in primarily the younger target groups of millennials. Uh, it was the core uh, that we were uh, uh, focusing. But in addition to the communication campaign, we also uh, included our restaurants in terms of sharing this information at our point of sale. So you just see a few examples here from uh, menu boards, uh, also the kiosk screen. We had stickers on our takeaway bags where you could um, actually scan, uh, scan the QR code and find out more about the PFC seal. And um, when we uh, observed the, the consumer reactions, uh, they were all very positive. Uh, first of all, um, there was uh, there was surprised uh, about um, um, what the seal stands for and uh, um, and that we are actually supporting with uh, with our packaging choices sustainable forestry. Um, the perception was uh, that um, we are uh, actually um, being a trusted uh, trusted brand in this respect, and I think it helps us 
to um, to build further, uh, um, let's say, value, brand value in the market as brand with uh, with these trusted choices um, definitely have a, a, um, a higher relevance for customers today and also even more of growing importance for the future. Um, we also accompanied the campaign with a, a PR statement that we uh, issued together with the team of PFC Austria and also here from all different sides of media we generated quite positive response and these are just a few examples from let's say uh, the, the forestry category till uh, advertising as well as end consumer media that um, that uh, title like here uh, KFC package for the future or a sustainable forestry as a priority which um, helped us to fulfill the goal that we try to create on the market for the seal, as well as for raising awareness, what these uh, quality uh, controls and standards are meaning um, for our, um, yeah, for our surrounding and for our daily lives. So thank you very much. That was it. I hope you enjoyed the short overview. And yeah, I think handing back to you, uh, Fabian. Thank you, Agnieszka. Um, this is a real example of walk the talk, in a way, um, from, from bringing your responsible sourcing strategy to life and really explaining it to consumers. Uh, we know certification is a complex, is complex and it's a complex um, mechanism, even that word <laughs> is technical to explain, um, but it's not about making it mainstream. It's about really explaining it in a simple way, in a visual way. And I like when you said um, bringing transparency, credibility and sympathy as well um, as you convey that story. So thank you very much, uh, Agnieszka, and, and also a big uh, thank you to PFC Austria for, for helping on this um, on this campaign. So now I would like to, even though we, we are um, had so, such interesting um, messages from our speakers, I would like to do a quick check on the um, Q&A. We have a few questions and actually we've been pretty good at answering those questions um, as we were already presenting. So let me check one more time. Uh, what is in the chat? So, um, yeah, and, and we will share the, the recording for sure. So there was a very specific question on wood pallets, and we have I have answered that. And of course, um, we can come back to, we will give you our email addresses um, in a moment. So you can also contact us for more of these questions. Uh, I've also answered the question about EUDR. Uh, so the roadmap is live um, to with a name goal to be aligned by the summer 2024 for our benchmark. Um, so, and then there was a very specific questions on a, a product label use. So I hope I've answered this correctly through the chat. I, I would like just to ask our, our panel a, a question because um, a lot of our certificate holders are uh, certified to PFC and uh, strong actors in the supply chain, wherever they are at mid-level, converter, printer, and, and so on. And then we also um, aim to help end users and retailers to understand foreign certification. Do you think that there's enough collaboration happening between what the suppliers, the innovation that the suppliers are trying to create, to develop, and the brand? whether they're brand manufacturers or like some of the examples Anna you showed or the retailers um, to really make it happen, to really achieve uh, that, that carbon emission reduction. Do you think there's enough collaboration happening? It's it's hard to answer in a, in a really kind of like general way, right? I, I, I think there's, there could always be more more collaboration, um, but I also understand that manufacturers also have to face their own <laughs> kind of specificities and problems and supply chains and and complexities. So um, I I think I think collaboration is important when you want to solve a, a big uh, big um, big problem. I think organizations like yours 
are pushing for, or like Michelle did today, are, are pushing to collaborate, to, to share information. I think that is important. And I'm seeing a lot of um, manufacturers actually do that. But I also think that some of the problems, when a lot of the problems might be quite specific sometimes to, to their um, supply chains or to their product portfolios or infrastructure. So yes and no, I would say, <laughs> yes. Uh, Michelle, yes, please go ahead. I, I, I just want to make a point. Uh, we are very conscious in uh, Europe of uh, what we need to do. Uh, uh, sometimes we are uh, uh, supplying product from uh, other countries than Europe. I will not uh, say any, any, any name, but um, uh, the problem could arise from those kind of product. I, I'm sure that uh, uh, having worked with, uh, with a lot of uh, countries in Europe that really now the consumer and the producers in Europe are very aware. Uh, are we sure that what we source out of Europe is thinking the same way? That's the question. I understand, but uh, yeah, I understand your point and I guess Potentially EUDR will help that way. Um, but a lot of multinational source from all over the corners of the planet. And their their rules, I imagine, their rules, whether you know, KFC source from Europe or from um South America, North America, the rules that they're um I, I'm not really concerned uh, by big companies, but uh, you have not only the big companies which yeah. were listed uh, on yeah. the front slide. Yeah. You have also a lot of small companies uh, working with internet, with the web, and yeah. uh, providing you uh, a lot of things. So you, everything could be uh, supplied by internet now, and uh, sometimes by, by uh, mi middle size or small companies, we just don't care about uh, what we talk to them. Understood. Um... Good. Would they, Agnieszka, would you like to, to comment on this from your perspective and your relationship with your suppliers? No? <laughs> okay. Um, in that case, um, Julia, if you could just bring back the, the uh, last slide, um, it, or the second but last slide, and it remains to just explain that again, um, PFC certification is here to develop, to deliver a changing expectation. We have a big one on our hands with the EUDR, but it's not just about the EUDR. There's also so many things uh, around um, deforestation. We aim to be remaining relevant and part of the solution and providing scale, connection, and fair costs. So really today was uh, uh, an... an webinar aiming to really show the connections between all our actions um, at our different levels to help safeguard forest. I would like to say a big thank you to Michelle, Anna and Agnieszka, our three speakers, for sharing your experience, sharing your uh, insights and expertise. I would like to say thank you to the audience. We will share the recording and the key takeaways. And if you have questions, you can see a couple of our emails here in front of you. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you.